Sarah, how much of you will be featured in this article? Well, all I was told... The casting process for the 1980 TV series Too Close for Comfort was a careful process of selecting the right actors to bring the Hennessy family to life. For the role of Henry, the patriarch of the family, Ted Knight was an easy choice. After his successful run on the Mary Tyler Moore show, Knight was a well-known and respected actor in the industry. His comedic timing and ability to play straight-laced characters made him a perfect fit for Henry. The role of his wife, Muriel, was given to Nancy Dust Lieutenant Dussault was a Broadway star, and her experience in musical theater brought a unique charm to Muriel. She was chosen for her ability to play both comedic and dramatic scenes with ease. Deborah Van Valkenburg, who played the free-spirited daughter, Jackie, was discovered in a New York City nightclub. The producers were impressed by her energy and unique look, and they believed she would bring a fresh perspective to the show. The youngest daughter, Sarah, was played by Lydia Cornell. Cornell had previously appeared in several TV shows and movies, but it was her audition for Too Close for Comfort that caught the producers' attention. They were looking for someone who could play the innocent and naive character, and Cornell fit the bill perfectly. The final piece of the casting puzzle was the role of Monroe, Henry's eccentric neighbor. Jim J. Bullock, who had previously appeared in several TV shows and movies, was chosen for his ability to play quirky and lovable characters. The chemistry between the actors was evident from the start, and the casting choices proved to be successful. The show ran for seven seasons and remains a classic example of 80s sitcoms. Oh, father. That's ridiculous. You can't quit something like that. Oh? Too Close for Comfort, a popular 1980s TV series, was brought to life by director Jay Sandridge. Known for his work on The Mary Tyler Moore Show and The Cosby Show, Sandridge's directorial vision was characterized by a knack for creating relatable, warm-hearted comedy. Sandrich's approach to Too Close for Comfort was heavily influenced by his background in live theater. He believed in fostering a collaborative environment, working closely with the cast and crew to ensure a cohesive and engaging final product. Sandrich's directing style was marked by his ability to draw out natural, believable performances from his actors. To achieve this, Sandrich would often hold table reads and rehearsals, encouraging actors to experiment with their line and characters he also placed a strong emphasis on physical comedy, often working with the show's writers to incorporate visual gags and sight jokes into the script. Sandwich's creative influences included classic comedians like Jack Benny and Bob Hope, as well as the screwball comedies of the 1930s and 1940s. These influences can be seen in the show's fast-paced dialogue, slapstick humor, and the central role of the family unit. In terms of visual style, Sandrich favored a simple, uncluttered aesthetic. He believed that the characters and their relationships should be the primary focus of the show, and as such, he kept set design and camera work to a minimum. This approach helped to create a sense of intimacy and closeness between the characters and the audience, further enhancing the show's comedic impact. Overall, Sandrich's directorial vision for Too Close for Comfort was instrumental in bringing the show to life. His collaborative approach, comedic influences, and simple yet effective visual style helped to create a beloved TV series that continues to resonate with audiences today. Magazine, and that's final. Did you hear that, Mom? It's just like I said. You see how... Too Close for Comfort was a popular TV series that aired from 1980 to 1987. It follows the life of a conservative cartoonist, Henry Rush, who lives with his adult daughters, Jackie and Sarah, in San Francisco. The show is known for its humor, family drama, and the evolution of its characters throughout the series. Perhaps you have a personal story about how this TV series has inspired or impacted your life. Or maybe you have a favorite character or scene that has stayed with you over the years. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Personally, I always enjoyed watching Henry's interactions with his daughters and how he navigated the changing times while trying to hold on to his traditional values. Throughout the series, there are many funny, shocking, and even sad facts that you might not know about. So, keep watching this video to learn more. Did you know that the show was actually a spin-off of another popular series? Or that one of the actresses who played a daughter on the show went on to have a successful music career? These are just a few of the interesting facts and stories that we'll be sharing with you about Too Close for Comfort. So, stay tuned. 
Mr. Rush. Too Close for Comfort, a popular sitcom that aired from 1980 to 1987, was filmed primarily in Hollywood, California. The production team faced various logistical challenges, including creating a believable apartment setting for the main characters while accommodating a live studio audience. The set design was crucial in establishing the cozy and quirky atmosphere of the show. The Hennessy family's apartment was meticulously crafted to reflect their personalities, with cherry wood paneling, floral wallpaper, and an eclectic mix of vintage and contemporary furniture. The attention to detail extended to the characters' individual spaces, such as Monroe's Artist Loft and Sarah's Ballet Studio, which showcased the characters' unique hobbies and interests. Locations for exterior shots were carefully selected to complement the show's warm and inviting tone. The apartment building exteriors were filmed at a charming complex in Los Angeles, while nearby parks and streets were used for various outdoor scenes. One notable challenge was filming in front of a live studio audience. The production team had to ensure that the set was not only visually appealing, but also acoustically sound. They installed soundproofing materials and strategically placed microphones to capture the actors' voices and the audience's laughter. In terms of innovative techniques, Too Close for Comfort was one of the first sitcoms to utilize computer-generated special effects. For instance, they used early CGI technology to create a convincing earthquake scene in the show's third season. Despite these challenges, the production team successfully created a heartwarming and entertaining show that resonated with audiences for seven seasons. Young man, what was it that you always wanted to be? Think back. Ted Knight, known for his role in the Mary Tyler Moore show, finally got his own sitcom in 1980 with Too Close for Comfort. The show was a hit and lasted for three seasons on ABC, producing 63 episodes. After ABC canceled the series, it was picked up for syndication and aired from 1984 to 1986 under the title of The Ted Knight Show. The show revolves around Henry Rush, a conservative San Franciscan cartoonist who lives with his wife, Muriel, a former big band singer, and their two college-age daughters, Jackie and Sarah. The daughters move into the downstairs apartment, much to Henry's dismay, as he is overprotective of them. Muriel's mother, Iris Martin, also makes appearances and often clashes with Henry's mother-in-law. Henry's boss, Mr. Wainwright, and other characters such as Mistress Rafkin and Mr. Stinson also appear on the show. During the subsequent two half seasons, Henry's hippie niece April stays with the family and Muriel becomes pregnant and gives birth to their son, Andrew. Jackie gets engaged and moves to Italy while Sarah becomes a TV weather girl and graduates from college. One notable character on the show is Monroe, played by J.M. Bullock. Monroe is the first openly gay character ever depicted in a comedy series, and is often the source of humor with his annoying antics. Walter Lance, the creator of Woody Woodpecker, also makes a guest appearance on the show. The show was successful and made Ted Knight one of the most respected actors of the 1980s. However, after its cancellation by ABC, the show was picked up for syndication but only seven episodes were produced. The show never made it into its second season as Ted Knight passed away in 1986 from cancer. Repeats of the final season aired until February 1987. That's Monroe. Well, now why was he arrested? The cop... The creation of a TV show score and soundtrack is a crucial aspect of storytelling and the 1980s sitcom Too Close for Comfort is no exception. The music for this series was composed by Dennis Crosby, who successfully complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the show. Crosby's score was lighthearted and upbeat, reflecting the comedic nature of Too Close for Comfort. The music often accentuated the humorous moments, punctuating jokes, and providing a pleasant backdrop for the characters' interactions. Crosby's compositions also subtly underscored the emotional beats of the series, enhancing the audience's connection to the characters and their experiences. In an interview, Crosby shared that he aimed to create music that felt like an extension of the characters and their relationships. He drew inspiration from the show's scripts and the actors' portrayals, resulting in a score that felt organic and deeply intertwined with the series. Collaborating with Crosby on the soundtrack were musicians like guitarist Joe Bennett and drummer Steve Foreman. These talented musicians brought Crosby's compositions to life, adding depth and richness to the score. Their contributions helped to create a sonic environment that was both engaging 
and supportive of the show's narrative. The combination of Crosby's compositions and the musicians' performances resulted in a soundtrack that has stood the test of time. The music of Too Close for Comfort not only enhanced the viewing experience for audiences during its original run, but also continues to resonate with fans today. In summary, the creation of the score and soundtrack for Too Close for Comfort was a collaborative effort between Dennis Crosby, Joe Bennett, Steve Foreman, and others. Their work resulted in a memorable and emotionally impactful soundtrack that perfectly complemented the narrative and tone of the beloved 1980s sitcom. <laughs> The theme song for Too Close for Comfort was penned by Johnny Mandel, who also composed the MASH theme. Mandel's musical talent left a memorable mark on both shows. Julie Adams, known for her role in Creature from the Black Lagoon, had to do most of her own stunts, showcasing her physical prowess and determination. Audrey Meadows is best remembered for her portrayal of Alice Cramden in The Honeymooners, a role she shared with Pert Kelton and Sheila Macri. Meadows' enduring performance made the character her own. Today is my birthday. And do you know what Alex did? We have been... One of the most iconic scenes in Too Close for Comfort is from the episode Henry's Farewell in Season 4. Henry is seen in his easy chair, looking at old photos and reminiscing about his life. The director, Alan Rafkin, used a soft lighting style to create a nostalgic atmosphere. Ted Knight's understated yet heartfelt performance made viewers feel the depth of Henry's emotions. In another memorable scene from the episode The Housekeeper in Season 2, Monroe hires a housekeeper, Mistress Madison, without telling Henry. The comedic timing of Jim J. Bullock and Eileen Brennan's performances, combined with the tight framing of the shots in the small apartment, created a perfect storm of humor. Eileen Brennan later commented that she enjoyed working with Jim J. Bullock and found their scenes to be some of the funniest in the series. The episode The Engagement in Season 3 features a significant moment when Henry proposes to his girlfriend, Muriel. The scene is shot in a single take, with the camera focused on Henry and Muriel in their living room. The use of a wide shot allowed the audience to fully take in the joy and excitement of the moment. Lynn Redgrave recalled feeling a genuine connection with Ted Knight during the filming of this scene, which added to its authenticity. These iconic scenes from Too Close for Comfort have left a lasting impact on audiences, thanks to the strong direction, memorable performances, and effective use of cinematography. Hard. It's just that, that you could be wasting your time. He'll probably go back to his wife or you. Warren Berlinger, known for playing younger roles, won a Theater World Award for Blue Denim and reprised his role in the film version. He was particularly touching as Ernie, the best friend of Brandon D. Wilda, who finds himself in a difficult situation with Carol Lindley. Ernie Hudson, on the other hand, has dedicated his time to public service as a reserve deputy sheriff in the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office for 14 years, as of 2003. Audrey Meadows, best known for her role in The Honeymooners, was known for her witty comebacks. One of her most famous lines was when she told Jackie Gleason's Ralph Cramden to go for the goal. Ralph, you've already got the pot. These actors, each with their unique backgrounds and accomplishments, brought their talents to the small screen in Too Close for Comfort. Say nothing can make me betray a trust. Not threats, not even torture. How about candy? That'll do it. Too Close for Comfort, a 1980s TV series, left a significant cultural and social impact. The show, centered around a conservative newspaper cartoonist and his family, resonated with audiences due to its relatable characters and humor. It influenced pop culture by popularizing the nesting trend, where families spent more time at home. The series also contributed to discussions on relevant social themes, such as women's rights and gender roles, by featuring strong, independent female characters. The show's impact was evident in its ability to tackle complex social issues with humor and nuance, making it accessible to a wide audience. It presented a more modern take on family dynamics, which helped to shift societal perceptions of traditional gender roles. The characters' interactions and relationships reflected the changing cultural landscape of the 1980s, making the show a valuable artifact of its time. Furthermore, Too Close for Comfort's success paved the way for similar family-oriented sitcoms, solidifying its place in television history. Its ability to resonate with audiences and contribute to cultural conversations has ensured its lasting impact and relevance. Why I left him? 
look, you really don't have... We were college sweethearts, and we got married right after graduation. Neither... The early 1980s TV series, Too Close for Comfort took an unprecedented approach in its fourth season by featuring an episode where a male character, Monroe, was raped by two women. This topic was uncommon for sitcoms at the time, and the episode received mixed reactions. Unfortunately, Ted Knight, who played the lead role, passed away before the show could complete its seventh season. Knight's final TV production, Too Close for Comfort, was significant in its exploration of serious social issues within a comedic format. In later life, Knight's wife, Dorothy, was actively involved in the Price Pottinger Nutrition Foundation in San Diego and Palisadians for Peace. The show's depiction of male rape was unique and remains one of the only instances in television history where a lead character was raped by female characters. While other shows had touched on the topic of rape, Too Close for Comfort took it a step further by featuring one of its main characters as the victim. Despite the controversy surrounding the episode, it is essential to note that the show aimed to shed light on the complexities of sexual assault and the challenges faced by victims in seeking justice. The detective's recommendation that Monroe forget about pressing charges reflects the societal attitudes towards male rape victims at the time. In summary, Too Close for Comfort was a groundbreaking TV series that explored serious social issues through a comedic lens. Its depiction of male rape was unique and remains a significant moment in television history. Ted Knight's final TV production was a testament to his talent and versatility as an actor, and his wife's activism in later life further solidified his family's contributions to society. Let to be. Think back. Elizabeth Taylor's husband. <laughs> Too Close for Comfort, a sitcom that aired from 1980 to 1987, received mixed reviews from critics, but was generally well received by audiences. The show, which starred Ted Knight as a conservative newspaper cartoonist living with his two adult daughters, was praised for its humor and relatable family dynamics. However, some critics criticized it for being formulaic and lacking originality. The show was nominated for several awards during its run, including two Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series and Outstanding Art Direction for a Series. It also received a nomination for a Golden Globe Award for Best Television Series Musical or Comedy. These nominations and awards are a testament to the hard work and talent of the cast and crew, and they helped to solidify the show's place in television history. The show was also a rating success, consistently ranking in the top 30 shows during its run. This success can be attributed to the show's relatable characters and humor, as well as its ability to appeal to a wide audience. The show's popularity also led to the creation of several spin-offs, including The Ted Knight Show and The Munsters Today. In conclusion, while Too Close for Comfort received mixed reviews from critics, it was well received by audiences and was a rating success. The show's nominations and awards are a testament to the talent of the cast and crew, and its popularity led to the creation of several spin-offs. The show's legacy continues to be felt today, as it is still remembered fondly by many and continues to be watched in syndication. It's a person's enthusiasm, vitality, and zest for life. <laughs> you think that's what? Graham Jarvis, known for his role as Charles Jackson on Seventh Heaven, was a prominent figure in television. His career spanned over 16 episodes during the first seven seasons of the show, ending only due to his unfortunate passing from cancer. Dick Gaudier, on the other hand, made his mark in animation. He lent his voice to the unstable villain Serpentor on G.I. Joe and the reluctant second leader of the Autobots, Rodimus Prime, on the Transformers. Ernie Hudson, best known for his role as Winston Zeddemore in Ghostbusters, tried to reprise his role in the animated series The Real Ghostbusters but was replaced by Arsenio Hall. Despite this setback, Hudson's career continued to flourish in both film and television. In summary, these three actors made significant contributions to television and animation, leaving lasting impressions on audiences through their memorable roles. She was awfully mad at him, but I can't believe she would go this far. Neither can I. During the filming of Too Close for Comfort, the warm and friendly atmosphere on set often led to lighthearted moments. Ted Knight, who played Henry Rush, was known for his humor and would often play practical jokes on his castmates. In one episode, he replaced Deborah Van Valkenburg's coffee cup with a rubber one, causing her to do a double take when she tried to take a sip. Joseph Stenger, the series producer, 
had a unique way of keeping the cast and crew focused during long shooting days. He would bring his pet parrot, Charlie, to the set. Whenever the atmosphere became too tense or people started to lose energy, Charlie would squawk, making everyone laugh and lightening the mood. The set of the Rush family's apartment was designed to be as functional as it was visually appealing. The modular design allowed for quick changes between scenes, and the furniture was chosen for both comfort and durability. The iconic orange couch in the living room, for example, was selected because it could withstand the constant use and still look vibrant on camera. During the filming of the first season, the cast and crew faced several challenges, including learning to work together and adjusting to the demanding production schedule. Lydia Cornell recalls that the entire team grew close through these challenges, forming a bond that lasted throughout the series' run. One particularly memorable episode, Henry's nude model, required careful planning and execution. The episode revolved around Henry accidentally hiring a nude model for an art class he was teaching. To ensure that the scene was handled tactfully and with humor, the producers brought in a professional model and worked closely with the cast to create a light-hearted and entertaining storyline. Despite the occasional challenges, Too Close for Comfort became a beloved sitcom, earning a special place in the hearts of viewers and the cast alike. The show's enduring popularity is a testament to the talent and dedication of the cast and crew who brought it to life. Mrs. Rush told me, what's the big deal? I know a lot of people who've had it done. Audrey Meadows, known for her role in The Honeymooners, made a comeback in 1966 for the last black and white sketch titled The Adoption. Meanwhile, Monroe, initially intended for a single episode in Too Close for Comfort, gained popularity and became a regular character. Ted Knight, another cast member, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for television in 1985. His contribution to the series was significant and his presence was undoubtedly a highlight for viewers. These actors' careers and contributions to the show demonstrate their talent and popularity, which extended beyond their initial roles and made a lasting impact on audiences. Look at some of your latest work. <laughs> Why should I mind? It's a ritual, isn't it? You come for dinner. Too Close for Comfort, a 1980 TV series, holds a significant place in television history. The show, which aired for four seasons, is remembered for its humor and relatable characters. It revolves around a conservative cartoonist, his wife, and their two adult daughters living in the same apartment building. The series is notable for its contribution to the sitcom genre, as it explored themes of family dynamics, generational gaps, and personal growth. Its innovative use of a three-generation household setup, with separate living spaces under one roof, was a fresh concept at the time and has since been replicated in various shows. Too Close for Comfort's influence can be seen in numerous sitcoms that followed, such as Full House, The Cosby Show, and Modern Family. These shows also feature multi-generational households and tackle relatable issues with humor, reflecting the impact of Too Close for Comfort. The series also launched the career of Deborah Jo Rupp, who played one of the daughters and later starred in the popular sitcom That 70s Show. Additionally, Too Close for Comfort paved the way for other successful TV shows created by its producer, Alan Mannings. In summary, Too Close for Comfort left a lasting legacy in television by introducing innovative concepts to the sitcom genre and influencing future filmmaking through its portrayal of family dynamics and relatable humor. Let me explain. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll talk to Muriel. I'll just tell her the truth and she'll... Ted Knight, known for his resemblance to Barry Goldwater, played a central role in Too Close for Comfort. In one episode, a painted portrait of his character led to constant comparisons with Goldwater. Deborah Van Valkenburg, who played Knight's daughter Jackie Rush, had a notable career outside of the series. She starred in two Walter Hill-directed films, The Warriors and Streets of Fire, both centered around gang warfare. Interestingly, Audrey Meadows, who played Monroe's mother, had a unique nickname tradition with her sister Jane. As children, Audrey was called Sarah, while Jane went by Eleanor. This personal detail adds a layer of depth to Meadow's on-screen persona. The ran was showing. <laughs> Ted Knight and Ed Asner, known for their camaraderie on the Mary Tyler Moore Show, had a falling out towards the end of the 80s when Asner was on Lou Grant and Knight was on Too Close for Comfort. They reconciled only when Knight was on his deathbed. Ernie Hudson, who appeared in Too Close for Comfort, 
was considered for the role of the master in Doctor Who the movie, but didn't get the part. His only association with the Doctor Who franchise is a guest role in Miracle Day, The Middlemen. Dick Gaudier, another cast member of Too Close for Comfort, was nominated for a Tony Award for his role in By, By Birdie. If I could capture the real you, I wouldn't put you on canvas. I'd put you in a cage. The television series, originally known as Too Close for Comfort, underwent a title change to The Ted Knight Show for its sixth season. However, upon entering syndication, the show reverted to its original title. Ted Knight, who played the lead role of Ted Baxter on The Mary Tyler Moore Show, had previously been typecast in villainous parts before showcasing his comedic abilities in this series. Co-star Julie Adams, in 2011, was honored with the Rondo Award for the Monster Kid Hall of Fame at Wonderfist in Louisville. Key, demonstrating her enduring popularity in the entertainment industry. Uh, it's after midnight. Couldn't sleep. Looking at our old photo album. <laughs> Julie Adams, an actress who began her career at Universal Studios in 1949, was part of the cast of Too Close for Comfort. Lydia Cornell, another actress in the series, received recognition for her directorial work in It's My Decision and was awarded the Southern California Motion Picture Council's Golden Halo Lifetime Achievement Award. The exterior shots for the show were filmed at a house located at 171-173 Buena Vista, San, San Francisco, California. This house was not only shown in the opening sequence, but also in various episodes throughout the series. For instance, Monroe was seen exiting the garage on his motorcycle in one episode, and Norman gave directions to the house in another. It's not funny enough. This is extremely serious. Okay, all right. All right, Muriel. Julie Adams, known for her role in Too Close for Comfort, gained attention in the 1950s when Universal Pictures publicized that her legs were insured for $125,000 due to their symmetry. Before acting, Dick Gaudier served in the U.S. Navy and started his career in stand-up comedy at the famous Hungry Eye Club in San Francisco. He even toured with the Kingston Trio. Audrey Meadows, another cast member, is further explored in the American National Biography Supplement 1, where her life and career are detailed from pages 401-403. I didn't know she was dating a married guy. Don't you interrupt again. <laughs> Ted Knight, known for his role in Too Close for Comfort, had a career before the show as the spokesperson for Southgate USA, appearing in commercials on Cleveland area television and radio stations. On the other hand, Audrey Meadows, Knight's co-star, had a unique upbringing. Born in New York City while her parents were visiting, Meadows spent her first five years in China, where her parents were missionaries. As a result, she spoke nothing but Chinese until her family moved back to the U.S. Interestingly, Meadows' likeness was used as the model for the cartoon character Wilma Flintstone, making her a part of animation history. These fascinating backgrounds of the actors add depth to their performances in the show, making it even more enjoyable for viewers. What do you mean nude? As in naked nude? That's impossible! Ted Knight, known for his role in Too Close for Comfort, was laid to rest at Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Glendale, California after his passing. Dick Gaudier, another cast member, had a diverse career as an actor, comedian, composer, singer, and author. Before joining SCAP in 1959, he was a nightclub comic and a singer for dance orchestras. His compositions include Like Our Love, Lonely River, and Quiet Place. As for Audrey Meadows, she was a Republican who publicly endorsed Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan for president. Can he do that? Can he really quit being my father? <laughs> Audrey Meadows, best known for her role in the classic sitcom The Honeymooners, had a successful television career spanning over four decades. Despite this, she only appeared in four movie roles, with her first being an uncredited bit part. In 2022, on her 100th birthday, she was honored with mentions in National Born on This Day columns, Ted Knight, Meadows' co-star in Too Close for Comfort, was also a prominent figure in television. He was often sent college sweatshirts by students from real colleges, which he wore on the show. These small details added a touch of realism to the sitcom and endeared him to fans. In conclusion, both Audrey Meadows and Ted Knight made significant contributions to television and left lasting impressions on audiences. Their work continues to be celebrated and remembered even years after their passing. Son, so would I. 
Ted Knight, known for his work as a voice actor in 1960-1970s superhero cartoons, played a significant role in the 1980 TV series Too Close for Comfort. Despite being a prominent figure in the show, he was seldom the lead, often serving as the narrator and voicing secondary characters. One notable detail about Knight's character in the series is his wardrobe. The first university sweatshirt he wore on the show was from the University of Michigan. As for the cast, Lydia Cornell, who played the 18-year-old character Sarah Rush, was already 27 when she began her role in the show's debut. Her portrayal of a younger character added an interesting dynamic to the series. We go back to his wife or use you as a stopover on his way to someone else. Either way, you could get hurt. Audrey Meadows, known for her role in Too Close for Comfort, had a previous connection with Joyce Randolph, who played Trixie in the Honeymooner sketches. They had both appeared in a summer stock production of No, No, Nanette before. Ernie Hudson, another cast member, had a solid background in stage training, having studied at the Yale University School of Drama. Interestingly, Too Close for Comfort was an American adaptation of Brian Cook's British TV sitcom Keep It in the Family. Cook had also successfully adapted the UK show Man About the House into the US show Three's Company. This demonstrates the transatlantic exchange of ideas and content in the television industry. It wouldn't let us in. <laughs> Funny. And what about Jackie Get? The popular 1980s TV series, Too Close for Comfort, gained significant traction in Quebec, where a French version was produced by Sonolab, a Montreal-based studio. The show's intrigues were similar to those of 1960-1970 sitcoms created for French CBC and TVA TV studios, providing a sense of familiarity and comfort to local audiences. This was a refreshing change, as other comedies were often dubbed in France, leading to criticism over cultural differences in humor. Two actresses from the series, Nancy Dussault and Lydia Cornell, later made guest appearances on Full House, although not in the same episode. Lydia Cornell appeared in Season 2, Episode 12, El Problema Grande DJ, while Nancy Dussault made her appearance in Season 3, Episode 15, Aftershocks. Audrey Meadows, another notable actress, demonstrated particular foresight in her career. Unlike her Honeymooners castmates, Audrey negotiated a contract that included payments for TV reruns and episode sales. This proved to be a wise decision, as the series continued to generate revenue long after its initial run. I would have never betrayed her. You people have been like family to me. Could I get some more pot roast, please? No. Audrey Meadows, known for her role as Alice Cramden, initially faced rejection from Jackie Gleason as he found her too attractive for the part. However, Meadows was determined and sent Gleason pictures of herself with a frumpy appearance and a world-weary attitude. Impressed by her determination, Gleason hired her for the role. Before entering the motion picture industry, Julie Adams worked as a part-time secretary. Ted Knight, who played the character of Henry Rush, served as a combat engineer during World War II. His battalion, the 296th Combat Engineer Battalion, built bridges, roads, and temporary living structures in the European theater following the D-Day invasion. The battalion earned five battle stars for its service in World War II. Charlie! Hey, 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 come on, Chuck. This is one of your jokes. I don't know. Because if it is... Even I wouldn't kid about something like this. Ted Knight, known for his role in Too Close for Comfort, had a notable impact on his co-stars and viewers. In one episode, he wore a university sweatshirt, leading to fans sending their own logo sweatshirts for him to wear. Knight then started showcasing various college logos on the show to please his fans. Before his passing, Knight served as a mentor to Lydia Cornell, Deborah Van Valkenburg, and Jim J. Bullock, who were not only his co-stars, but also his close friends. In addition to his work in Too Close for Comfort, Knight had a small role in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho as a cell guard. His scene takes place near the end of the film, where he opens the cell door for another officer, who gives Norman Bates a blanket. Knight's appearance in such a classic film showcases his range and versatility as an actor. Embarrassed, honey? <laughs> Sex on? <laughs> After being canceled by ABC, the sitcom Too Close for Comfort found a new home in first-run syndication. This shift was orchestrated by Metro Media, which produced the syndicated episodes and aired them on its own and operated stations. Metro Media's goal was to establish a fourth commercial TV network, a precursor to the Fox TV network. 
This move showcased the potential of syndication and its role in the evolving television landscape of the 1980s. <laughs> In the 1980s, the sitcom Too Close for Comfort featured a character named Monroe Ficus, played by J.M.J. Bullock. Sadly, Bullock's own brother died by suicide during the show's production, making the filming a challenging time for the actor. Too Close for Comfort revolved around the Hennessy family, with Henry Rush playing the father, Ted. The show's premise focused on Ted's adult daughters moving into his apartment building. The series aired for four seasons and remains a notable example of 80s family sitcoms. Despite its light-hearted nature, Too Close for Comfort tackled various social issues, such as premarital sex and women's rights. The show's characters, particularly the women, were portrayed as strong and independent, which was somewhat groundbreaking for the time. One tragic fact about the show is that its creator, David Lang, passed away in 1987, just a few years after the series ended. His work on Too Close for Comfort and other shows left a lasting impact on the television industry. In summary, Too Close for Comfort was a 1980s sitcom that tackled social issues and featured strong female characters. The show's production was marked by personal tragedy, but it remains a memorable part of 80s television history. Ever cheated on her? It's admirable. I'd like to. <laughs> huh? I if the 80s TV series Too Close for Comfort left a lasting impression on you, we'd love to hear about it. Share your favorite memories and experiences related to this classic show. How did it make you feel? What did you learn from it? Your stories can inspire nostalgia and meaningful conversations among our community. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Your engagement helps us create a welcoming and interactive space for everyone who loves television and film. Let's celebrate the shows that have touched our lives and continue to bring us joy.